We are back on the Falcons Audible, presented by AT&T. Welcome into our studios here, everybody. That's DJ Shockley, Dave Archer. I am Derek Rackley. We are going to talk about some Falcons stuff, a little bit of last week, a little bit of this week, and um, hopefully we can create some positive good mojo. Juju. <laughs> I, I put those two words together. I see Juju. Juju. So I heard making up good. new words here Ain't on the Falcons Audible. You can do that. You run the show. Let's right? go. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna create some muju up in here, okay? <laughs> um, all right, here's what we're gonna talk about. Um, been a lot of close games with Atlanta this year. We'll kind of discuss on what the guys think um, is attributing to coming up short in the close games. We'll talk a little bit more about the game in Washington. It was a pretty good atmosphere. It didn't seem like it was a full house, Dave. I know you'll talk about it. The weather conditions weren't great, but still, <laughs> they have a they have they, made a face. they are loud. Okay, they they still came to support their team. And then we will fast forward. We will talk about a home game against Pittsburgh Steelers. So, Dave, let's talk about this. Close games. Um, Twelve games this year. Nine of them coming down to a single score and. Sometimes you come up short, sometimes you win them. It seems like the teams that 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 have the veteran quarterbacks, the experienced players, playmakers, they find a way to win those games. Other teams find a way to come up short. What is what is your philosophy? What is your kind of breakdown as to why Atlanta comes up short in the closer games as to, as opposed to finding a way to win the close ones? Well, I think we're, we've made strides with that rack. I think that if you looked at this team a couple of years ago, you lost all of those. Yeah. And then you started to kind of tip the scales your direction last year with some of the wins you had late in the football game closed the game out or two defensively this year you've closed three out yep. on the defensive side of the football with interceptions at the end of the game to win it um but it tightens it tightens the noose a little bit on yeah. both both teams a little bit when you start thinking about okay making a play here or there you talk about making a play that's what happens this weekend deron Payne is essentially blocked on the play i talked to chris lindstrom post game i said what bugs you the most about that play you're blocking and the guy he says well i won the rep and so you're thinking, okay, I did my job. I blocked one of the top interior defensive linemen in the game. I blocked him. I won the rep, and he just threw his hand in the air yeah. and hit the ball. In yeah. the ball, and, and that's part of this league, and it's part of the things that happen in this league. He made a play. I guess you could qualify it as making a play. So there's got to be a sense of urgency, uh, shock with with guys on our team in maximizing your moments. We were mm -hmm. talking a little bit about this before we came on today mm -hmm. about, you know, you can't drop a pass on a screen. Okay? You got you can't get knifed on a on a short yardage run play, give up your inside gap so your running back gets blown up in the backfield. You I've got to get my head across his bow, get him blocked so I can get that little bit of push that we can get that yard, keep the drive going. Yeah. Especially when you're a team that runs the football like we do. There's going to be limited pos uh, opportunities with the football. You you go from 12 possessions a game to maybe 10, nine possessions a game. That magnifies the importance of the possessions, and that's why the games are close. But it also means that you better not blow an opportunity, right? right, right. And we've blown a couple of those opportunities. Yeah, and and the final drive that you're alluding to, and I wouldn't necessarily say that you characterize it as a blown opportunity. It would be more as a tough break, because just yeah. like you said, Lindstrom oh, yeah. says he won the rep, he had him blocked. And what is a defensive lineman coach to do? If you get don't get to the quarterback, up. get your hands up in the air. And like you said, Arch, sometimes it's just like a little a wave in the air, and it just not only does it happen to hit his hand, but it goes straight up in the air, mm -hmm. right? It's second down, right? If that ball ends up hitting the bottom of his hand and goes down, right? You live to play another down, yeah. right? Yeah, it just gets if, deflected. And, and if they're playing man coverage – Fuller's not even there. Yeah. But they're playing a zone there on about the four yard line. So everybody's eyes are up. And eyes are looking at those. So there was a guy there to make the play. So yeah, it's one of those one of those screwy moments where yeah. everything and, but, was right. And then you also look at the fact of in that moment, they had to have two really great plays to make that happen. Yeah. Like people look at it and say, Okay, why did you throw the ball? Why did you do this? The guy got his hand up. And then the guy literally had to dive fuller and get his arm on it to catch it. Like, those were just two great plays by those two guys. And like you said, it's one of those type of instances where, you know, you're just on the wrong end of that situation. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, to, to, to really address, I mean, I, I've heard it, you know, last couple of days, people saying, should you do this? Should you do that? I had no problem with the call. I had no problem with the first down call. You mm -hmm. think about throughout this whole entire ball game, 
Marcus was killing them in the zone read game. Yeah. He was crushing it. And obviously down there, everything shrinks. It gets a little bit tighter. So, you know, they, they shot the guy off the edge. He made a good play. Okay, so what? You move on to the next play. But if he doesn't get his hand on the ball, we throw the ball to CP, who's standing on the one-yard line. And you don't think he's not going to fall into the end zone? He's not going to run that guy over? He gets into the end zone, and the conversation is totally different right now. Mm-hmm. And it just so happens you on the other side of it, it's just a, a bad break for your team the way it happened. But ultimately, you know, if he doesn't get his hand on the CP, falls in the end zone, touchdown, we're up one, and we got to go yeah, stop and, and make no mistake, everybody's learning from these situations. I'll be their hard lessons. Yeah, yeah. The guy that's calling the plays is studying this stuff too. And I talked to him on Monday at his show and uh, his radio show on 9290 Game. And, and he talked about how the evaluation process is not just for our players. I'm evaluating how I'm calling the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave Ragone and I get together and we, we go over what we called. Did you like that call? Did that call work? Did it fit in that situation? They're scrutinizing their own decisions. And so. Sometimes coaches don't like to admit, oh, I, I, you second guess. And, and so, but he's a human being and saying, hey, yeah, we, we look at everything. Not that we're second guessing our strategies, but we are making sure that they fit the situation properly. Mm-hmm. And are we giving our guys the best chance to win? And so that, that'll be, they'll scrutinize that for whatever it was, 24, 48 hours going into this week against Pittsburgh. So I think everybody, I think we're all kind of in agreement here that there's nothing really to point your fingers on on the final drive, right? That there, it was just a stroke or maybe two strokes on one play of bad luck <laughs> yeah. that every once in a while that happens. As I mentioned, yeah. like that maybe that ball gets tipped and it just falls down to the turf and nobody gets hurt. But um, that one ends up in an interception and it, and it stymies the, the Falcons' chance to not only get back in but win the football game. Let me ask you this question. And I'm not picking here, but this is something that I thought about. Uh, Drake London had two catches in this game with his first one being a pop pass in the first quarter. And a second one came at like, I want to say it was nine and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Before we came on, you mentioned that he dropped the pass. Do they need to find ways to get the ball into the hands of our first round pick more? I understand the identity of this team is not chucking it down the field, Mm -hmm. right? But when we do off season evaluation and pre-draft evaluation, like there's a reason why we draft the guy in the first round do they need with with Pitts being out, Dave? Did they did, could Atlanta use to find more ways to get the ball in the hands of Drake London? Well, I think there's yes is the answer to that, and and there's probably a couple reasons why you're it, not necessarily for his mental frame of mind. No, hey, we need to get him five grabs so he feels better. No, no, no. I'm talking himself. more about a playmaker. No, no, I agree with you what you're saying, and what it leads me to is you've got to find ways to make it easier on yourself. Because mm-hmm. right now, I don't know how you guys feel, when, I, when I'm when i calling the games and watch the games, okay, we got four there. Okay, whew, we got three there. <laughs> so now we're third and third. We can, we can manage it. Marcus could run it. We could throw it. And we could even go for it on fourth down if right, we want. Right, right. But that's hard, right? Yeah, you want yeah. you want some. Drive so you gotta, out, yeah. you got to find some chunk plays. And so Drake's the option for that. OZ's yeah. an option for that. Certainly – we saw CP. We talked a little bit about this last week when we knew Kyle wasn't going to play. Who's going to play in that spot? Well, CP caught one of those over routes from the slot yep. mm-hmm. that Kyle has caught a couple times this year. So there's no question, not just to get Drake the football, but just to relieve the pressure right. of calling the game for Arthur. And I'm sure he's looking. They had a couple of, and I know Shock, we were watching it. They had a couple of RPOs called that, um, or play action plays. Sometimes we get confused with what an RPO is in play action. They're calling them out, mm-hmm. but they had play action on where they wanted a flash play fake, throw the slant, the Drake, and they covered it. Yep. And you couldn't. And that was a couple times where it was a two man route. And now we as quarterbacks, you got to eat it because there's <laughs> yeah. nothing. So now Marcus yeah. is scrambling trying to make something happen, right? So, yeah, no question about that. Long answer to your question, but there's no question they need to get him the rock. In addition to what Arch just mentioned, and when you, you, you brought that, when you posed that question, the first thing that came to my mind was we are not in the meeting rooms to know, okay, what is the plan? 100%. Or what is designed to go to a particular player. Like, like Arch just mentioned, that particular play action, it was designed to try to get the football to Drake London. How many times in a game plan that we don't even know about or fans don't know about that the first read may be number five? But then there's also a point in a game where a particular coverage doesn't fit it. And like Arch mentioned earlier, 
there are so many things they study throughout a week of tendencies of first down, second down, what teams do in the red zone, what they do on third down. And you come into the game expecting it to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know in third and six plus they're going to play this certain coverage. Here's a route combination we like best versus it. Here's a chance for us to get number five of the football. Yeah. You get to the game, and guess what? It's third and six plus, and guess what? That team knows exactly, oh, this is what we've done in these situations, and they change the coverage. So now you change the coverage, he's not only not the first read anymore, he may not even be a part of the equation now. So I think that's part of it that I think people have to understand is throughout a game, the game plan changes, coverage changes, what defenses do to you, and just because – you know, this is a shot play to Drake London. As quarterbacks, we know just because coach calls a shot play don't mean you have to throw it. Right. And I think there's instances in the game where there are instances where you're trying to get him the football, but coverage dictates something different. Or the quarterback sees something differently. He comes up and he doesn't like the underneath coverage. or He doesn't like whatever he sees. So there's a lot of things, I think, factors that go into why sometimes a guy may not get as many targets or touches as – People on the outside think right. you should. Well, and, and trust me, you got to tip your cap sometimes to the defense because they're studying the roster. They yeah. know what the Atlanta has. They know what weapons they have. They're going to say in a third and medium or long situation, five or 84 is probably yeah. going to be the two best options. So let's cover those two guys up and make somebody else beat us. Absolutely. So don't get me wrong. I understand how the game works, and I know that sometimes they're trying to take it away. But there's also a part of me that says – you build your roster by draft picks, right? Through the draft and the number one, the first rounder is the best one that you guys felt out there. And that's one that like needs to find a way to touch the football more. So let's, we'll see if it happens. I know it's a different identity. It's a different offense right now. And maybe things will change as we move forward. But it was just a thought that I had about Drake London. Let's move over to the other side of the ball arch. I think the, the biggest thing, negatively you want to point out is that they ran the rock on Atlanta, right? Nine times out of 10, maybe nine and a half times out of 10. You could go to the college game, high school game. If somebody runs the football well, doesn't turn it over, a lot of times they're going to be in control, right? Just like we've seen with Atlanta that when they win football games, when they control the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. we can kind of stay in the game, dictate the game. Outside of the fact that they gave up a lot of rushing yards, which there may not be a whole lot of way to get outside of that, what was positive in your mindset defensively other than the run game? They kept Heineke from effect in the game. Heineke, if you remember last year, did a bunch of wild scrambles. In fact, had a wild scramble at the end of the game and threw a jump ball that ended up being a touchdown yep. and won the game on. He got out of the pocket one time. He missed McLaurin, who was open for a touchdown. It was a bad throw, missed him. Other than that, Heineke did not affect the game at all, I didn't think, as far as his ability to kind of keep things alive. He's not a great runner, but he is a guy that can buy time, and it's kind of been the reason there's been a resurgence. Their run game with Brian Robinson and Heineke's ability to take care of the ball, not turn the ball over, and make a play or two in the game. Mm -hmm. They kept him from doing that, and I think that, that you go back to looking at the Chicago game, what did you do? The quarterback scrambled around, made a couple throws. He didn't beat you deep, but you kind of kept him hemmed in and you hit him. Right. And so that, to me, is a positive is you kind of did it back-to-back -back weeks. Get ready. This, the, the young kid you're going to see this weekend has the ability to do that again, buy time, take off and run. He's not Justin Fields, but he is a guy that can go run for a first down or buy time and hit one of his receivers down the field. So, to me, that's a positive that you take over the last couple of weeks. I mean, DJ, what else stuck out for you? I saw A.J. Terrell a couple of times with some really good run support, nearly had the interception, somewhat of a circus interception after review came back, then tip of the ball was down on the ground. What else stuck out to you positive that Atlanta can build on? It's easy after a loss, guys, to sit here and pick and prod and say, this has got to be a whole lot better. You can't win if this is not. What positives did you see that they can build on moving forward as they close out the rest of the season? One thing that stood out to me was the, the effort that this team showed on defense running to the football. There mm -hmm. were times where, you know, it was third and, you know, five, six plus or whatever, and you're playing coverage and then they drop it down because, hey, nothing's there. And you see five, six, seven guys running to the ball. The AJ, the one you, you're talking about, AJ Terrell, the one he had on the Falcons sideline where he pops the, the, the running back over there. And then, you know, he doesn't end up making a tackle, but the guy doesn't get any more yards because he got three, four guys coming from the inside. Right. You got guys playing, you know, proper technique, running to the football. I, I thought that was something that was, 
that was big in this ball game, and not giving up tons of points. I mean, not giving up those huge explosives that we're used to over the past, you know, three, four games. People getting on top of you and being able just to keep things underneath. Another thing is, there are times where you can watch the disguise from this defense, and you're seeing them look like some pre-snap and some else go post-snap. There was a, a, a time on that particular play I'm talking about with AJ actually. Abby Kate actually wins on the inside. It's a four-man rush. It looks like they got two guys in the A-gap. Those guys bail out. Abby Kate hits him with a spin move, and he forces, he pushes Heineke out to the left side, and he has to just drop the ball off, and then it goes AJ, and they hit him and all that kind of stuff. Those are the type of plays that are winning plays because mm-hmm. if you can drop – you know, seven in the coverage, yep. and only you can get home with four. You can get pressure on the quarterback and force him off his spot. I think that's even more critical than sometimes just saying, hey, we're going to rush five or six guys get a sack. If you can do that with four, it's going to bowl better for you playing top down and maybe go tackle and, and tackle in space. When you talked about effort, DJ, I was wondering if you were going to go specifically to D-line because that's what I was thinking, that there was many a times that they didn't get to Heineke. But they push the pocket. They're yeah. continu- I mean, Abdullah Anderson, Gray Jarrett in the middle. I mean, they caused a couple of holding penalties mm. because of the effort that they're bringing inside. So that, to me, is all positive. Yes, at the end of the day, in the NFL, it's all about results. Did you get there? Did you get the job done? Did you get the quarterback on the ground? I understand all that. But they continue to play hard up front. They continue to play. If you're a coaching staff, like – the one thing that you guys know this when you struggle, and I'm not saying Atlanta is in this category, but you can tell when guys aren't giving you everything. Mm-hmm. Or you can tell when they've checked out or when they've started thinking about the offseason. Because let's be honest, guys, and, de- and when we get into December in the NFL, you start to see it a little bit, right? Oh, yeah. I'm not seeing any of that with Atlanta. These guys are continuing to fight and give everything that they've got. Now let's just see if it ends up uh, resulting in more victories. This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on The Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, Find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. Let's fast forward. Let's talk about next week. Dave, you talked a little bit about it. Quick little scouting report as Atlanta comes back home, what they're going to see from the Pittsburgh Steelers come away with a victory on Monday night. Well, it's a team that is going to mirror some of the stuff you do. They want to run the football. I mean, Najee Harris is a good back. He's a little bit banged up. He's got a foot injury. Uh, I thought Snell did a pretty good job if you watched the game on Monday night against Baltimore. Snell, who's kind of been left for dead, a guy that was a pretty good back in, in the SEC, is is resurfaced, and he yep. played pretty well last night. Um, so they've got a couple of banger backs that are going to run the football. They've got arguably one of the better tight ends in the in the National Football League in Vermouth. He, he's a guy that can, that can really win on the inside. He's a big-bodied dude. He kind of reminds you a little bit more of a – he's not a Kyle – Pitts type of guy is more of a Gronk type of guy, yeah. mm-hmm. um, but got good hands, can catch a ball in traffic, and they got this young quarterback. Um, Pickett's um, now I think started five or four, five, six games for him now. Um, I think he's settling in what he can and can't get away with, um, and, and so I think that offensively, offensive line, okay, not great up front. It's not like it's the best offensive line in the league or anything like that. So I think you can create some problems. Now you got to make sure he doesn't get out because he can get out. Again, he's not going to run 60 yards to a touchdown like Justin Fields, but he's going to get out and run for first downs. He's going to buy time. Got to watch the, the fake slides and stuff, right? Yeah, well, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, he, He's a big body dude, but uh, I like the way he's playing. But on the other side of the football, you know, Pittsburgh normally is known for playing defense. They can mm-hmm. rush the passer. I don't think they're as good against the run as they've been. They want to play, a two, uh, they want to play too high, and they want to play a lot of man underneath. That doesn't bode well against a team that runs the football. Right. Because now it's saying you're vulnerable against the run. You don't have enough resources in the box. And if somebody breaks contain or gets out and you're playing man coverage, there's nobody there to make the play. So it'll be interesting to see if Pittsburgh shifts gears a little bit, plays a little bit more single high, which is not necessarily their their bag. They don't have Troy Palomalo running mm-hmm. around back there anymore. Mm-hmm. Um to get another guy in the box to help defend the run, and are they willing to turn backs and run with receivers, knowing that somebody could break contain? Maybe the quarterback, the quarterback gets out on the zone read. There's nobody there. 
four and seven, the Pittsburgh Steelers this year, DJ. We, you know, when I say we, I'm saying when you and I were playing, you know, that's when Roethlisberger was there. Tomlin had recently taken over, and Pittsburgh lived in the postseason, right? Mm. Always competing to win their division, always making runs deep into the playoffs. Not necessarily going to be the case with this team. However, one thing that's I've always thought is interesting, and this happens every once in a while when visiting teams come into the house. <laughs> There'll be a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers fans in the stadium. And it's not necessarily one of those deals where you got to overthink playing crowd noise, yeah. but it will be a lot more noisy when Atlanta is on offense this week than normal because Steelers fans turn out no matter where they go. And in my experience here in Atlanta, Pittsburgh Steelers fans show out. So that's one area that they're going to have to kind of contend with. But how do you see this matchup kind of unfolding a little bit? First of all, that is uh, the truest statement ever. I remember might have been my rookie year we played Pittsburgh and we came out after, you know, after warmups and it felt like we were the waiting. I, I mean, <laughs> Pittsburgh absolutely travels. That's something that uh, obviously, uh, hopefully, you know, Falcons fans come out and, you know, kind of take over, take back over the bench from all the, the, the Pittsburgh fans. But I, I think Arch did a, a great job of talking about who Pittsburgh is. And you look at this ball game, uh, I think there's room for this Falcons defense to get home. And I say that because when you're a young quarterback, you don't want to make a lot of decisions. But at the same time, you say he's played a, you know, played a fair amount of football now that he feels a little bit more comfortable to put the ball, you know, up for, for grabs a little bit. I think he's got eight interceptions on the season to only three tubs. Uh, he's been sacked three, 23 times, though, uh, in a short amount of time he's been playing. So that tells you, you know, whether it's the old line or him holding on to the football, you got a chance to be able to get home. And ultimately that's something that, you, you know, bodes well for you defensively. But I, I think the MO is the same for the Falcons. Continue to do what you've been doing. We talked about it when he came on about being in all these one-score games and, you know, all the games being tight except for, you know, obviously Cincinnati. I think you continue along that same line because you've, you know, you've been in so many of those games and that's how you've dictated the ball game. But finishing in a game like this, I think, bodes well with the experience that you have on your side of the ball as opposed to having a rookie come in here and, you know, try to – you know, win them a ball game on the road. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But I think ultimately uh, you stay who you are on both sides of the ball, but you, I think you have more opportunity to affect this quarterback this week. Yeah, forgive me for not mentioning George Pickens because Pickens has been pretty good for him. Mm -hmm. um, the Georgia product, uh, he, he's from Georgia. Oh, I, well, I, <laughs> I can't believe bad. you didn't mention <laughs> no, I'm just, I mean, But Pickens, Pickens. I mean, he, it would have been it would have been too obvious <laughs> if I said it. If I said it, like, oh, there we I go. I mean, just so, as serious know. as a hard time. Where he's, he's, yeah. he's Right, been, right. He's been pretty good. He's made some circus catches this year. He made a couple good grabs again on Monday night for him. And the, he has does have uh, – he's developed a rapport with Pickens. You know, the two the two young guys who get, who go to figure, Pickens and Pickett, Pick kind of getting Pick. to get it together. But uh, Good luck with that this weekend. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to say that one. Pickett to Pickens. But that would well, be interesting to deal, as to what you do if you do play man coverage. A.J.'s traveled some, not a ton. A lot of times he stayed home. But we have traveled him some. This is not a receiver core that jumps off the map at it, other than the tight end, of course, as I mentioned, for Muth and Pickens. Pickens has been a pretty good player for him. Is this a is this a weekend where you decide, okay, hey, we're going to try to come up and stop Najee Harris and Snell and those guys running the football, mm -hmm. and we're going to give A.J. Pickens? That would be a hell of a matchup now between those two. One question I want to ask you, Archie. You, you talked about a guy like Troy Polamalu. They have a guy in Minka Pispatrick. Yeah, sure do. And a guy like that, is he – less of a big deal in this game because you don't have the impact of having a Kyle Pitts that he probably would be on, or you still see him as a guy who, like Paul Amalo, will still affect the game in a way because of how active he is on that defense well, side. Well, it's, it's a great point because he's kind of a ball hawk guy, right? Yeah. He kind of finds himself around the ball, gets the ball out. And so those are the kind of guys you love is if he's around the ball, it seems like he gets it on the ground or takes it from you. And he's he's continued to do that, a guy that, that can cover – so what is what what assignment do they give him? Because yeah. they do play a lot of too high. Yeah. Is he do they bring him down in the box? Does he draw maybe CP in the slot? That might be a matchup you see because I don't think they'll be overly concerned about Parker Hesse or somebody at the tight end mm -hmm. spot mm -hmm. um, or Ferkser, uh, both very very capable of doing something. But from an explosive standpoint, right. maybe he gets one of those assignments. But that's a great point, Shock. He's a dude that. For whatever reason, he's got one of those knacks, you know, those knack guys that kind of is around the ball a lot. They better be aware, man. My man Mike Cole's coming on. He he, he getting the zone. 
Pruitt. Let's go. I want to have a little fun here, okay? Because you, you had to ask Arch about where a certain guy was from in Georgia. Uh-huh. I saw we, you talked about Minka Fitzpatrick from uh-huh. Alabama. You talked about Najee Harris from Alabama. Uh-huh. He was on social media. I saw a clip this morning or last night where he was asked about uh, Georgia guys because, you know, obviously Georgia going to the SEC championship, so on and so forth. And he has asked a question about, like, always playing against first-round draft picks in practice at Alabama. And he makes this dig, Arch, or uh, shock. I'm Uh-oh. sure. I don't know if you heard this. He said, well, Georgia's coaches all just came from Alabama anyway. Oh. oh. Well, I mean. <laughs> so so does Georgia get their edge because Ooh. of Kirby coming from Alabama? Or is this a Georgia thing? That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Kirby didn't come from Alabama. I, mean, I can't lie. Came, yeah, he, did, he didn't bring that. He came from Georgia, right? He played for Georgia. He played for the dogs. He coached there my last year. But uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna keep it all the way real. I mean, you know, he was. I'm he just picked, saying, I mean, he picked Najee his Harris. Was, he picked his teeth. In, in he was. Time. He was trying to take his digs at Georgia because he's like, oh yeah, I play with Minka Fitzpatrick, and like you know, look at all these guys from Alabama that are just dominating the NFL, and you know, Georgia, they're they're good and all, but like they got what they got because their guys came from Alabama. That's I mean, what he was saying. It, I mean, it makes sense now. I mean, because they're not the the cream of the crop anymore. So you know, hey. See, you got to find a way. You got to find a way to. You know, when you're sitting in the driver's seat, right? Uh, You know, when your team, Georgia, is back to back 12 and 0 seasons, number one in the country. You look at them. (laughs) Keep going, right? Keep going, right? Overwhelming number one team in the country sitting in the driver's seat for the college football playoff. Keep it going, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here, here's a classic for you, Rack. We're coming in today, and it's all we're gonna pull the screen back here or the veil back. So we're coming in, and Shock saying, uh, "So how was after the game?" I said, "Well, it's tough when you lo- when you lose those kind of games, you know." He says, "Well, you know, you talk to Arthur post game every time, and you know, how's that? You know, you get these close losses, things like that." And I said, "Well, Shock, you know, you you do post game for Georgia, you know how that is." He says, "No, I don't know how that is." <laughs> So he was rubbing it in the nose of everybody before we ever got in here. They've won. What are you going to run a row now? What is it like? I'm just trying what, to pick my guy's one brain on 20. how he handles certain situations. <laughs> and then, it, you know, it kind of came and to then mind. He just he said, I don't, I don't, no. I don't, I don't uh, know how, those, I don't I don't know. how to ask those questions. All I've, only, I've only been with the – I've only, you know, kind of been in the role I have yeah. been for the last two years. So, in the last two no, years. It, was, it was more about the dogs being where they are and stuff like that. <laughs> So, so we're gonna get shock of mimosa here as he just takes his feet off of the counter. <laughs> pinky up, you uh, see that pinky up. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, now. we went off the rails. This is a Falcons podcast, yeah. okay? This is uh, not about DJ no, Shockley, no, the Georgia no, Bulldogs, no, but every no. once in a while, <laughs> yeah, you gotta have a little fun. All right, uh, Atlanta back at home against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, they've probably got some Georgia players and some Alabama players on the <laughs> roster, uh, but we're looking forward to uh, seeing Atlanta back on the field this weekend. Hopefully, coming away with a victory and seeing a whole bunch more smiles on the faces as we come back here and talk about Falcons stuff each and every week on the Falcons Audible, presented by AT and T. Thanks so much for watching us on whatever avenue you get your podcast from atlantafalcons.com youtube spot uh, spotify itunes is there any other ones i'm missing it right there. that's it that's, that's it the right four now. right there We're going down like avenue. subscribe <laughs> and review and hopefully if we didn't uh damage anything we'll be back here next week <laughs> nah, this, it, oh no it's still good. clean baby it's still, still clean, clean baby. uh thanks yeah. so much for watching us this week we'll be back <laughs> next week right here in falcons audible presented by at&t see ya